So today we're throwing it back to TOS and we're talking about the episode. Oh, 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 oh where are we? Oh, I don't know. No, no, no. We have to be in some kind of mirror universe or something. What makes you say that? My fireball. It's gone. Well, Alex, I'm sorry about your fireball, but uh, I guess while we're here in this mirror universe, we can still talk about mirror, mirror. Yeah, I guess so. I'm over there and you're over here, but one thing that hasn't changed is that Star Trek is still great and the T and TOS is still amazing. And just because it's fresh in my head uh, and Paramount Plus is what it is, so I have to throw them under the bus, even though it's not their fault. The start of this episode was so confusing because it just starts off in the middle of this council. I'm like, Paramount Plus uh, automatically skip the intro thinking it was the intro or something. <laughs> No, this episode just, I'm, I'm expecting the jingle, and just, we're in the middle of this council. I'm like, what happened? I'm like, oh, this episode just starts here. This episode was the definition of the starting off hot. Like, we're not wasting any time. We're, we're down here. There's an issue. I think, like, two minutes in, then the mirror universe thing happens. I'm like, all right. Has nothing to do with that opening scene, really. <laughs> like, after that, those characters are involved, but, like, that's not the point of the episode, so that's pretty funny. Uh they kind of come to a point because this planet has dilithium crystals that uh, the Federation could mine, so they're trying to work out a deal here. And they're like, no, we're, we're not doing that. And the whole point is Kirk's trying to convince them, and they have a line here. This isn't word for word. Uh, the guy, the Hulkin says, you have the might to take it from us, and Kirk says, right, but we won't consider that. And they go back up, and there's like a, a magnetic storm going on, some, you know, space problem, and that's what happens to big uh, so-and-so. Yeah, then they get right into the mirror universe, and right we there. see uh, our crew get transported to the mirror universe, already wearing, you know, the mirror universe get-ups. Well, was right. Was right. And I love all the little touches, how all their uniforms are a little bit different. They have a different insignia mm -hmm. that they're wearing. Obviously, Spock with the goatee is the biggest one everyone knows. Yeah, they seem prideful, all the, all the like medals and everything on there. I feel like in our universe, everyone has their medals in their quarters for the most part, but like this universe, uh, they're flaunted in everywhere. Uh, the Federation logo, instead of like an Earth with, uh, what's the original one? There's like something surrounding the Earth, but in this one, there's like a sword through it. Yeah. Above all that. That's a really good point about the medals. I didn't even think about that one. Yeah, that's true. The biggest thing, though, that stuck out to me going back to TOS after been watching these first two seasons of TNG the score in this show, I, you know, people like to say the Enterprise is a character. I think the score in TOS is a character. I mean, it adds to basically every scene of this episode. It says there's featured music by Fred Steiner. He did a great job if he was the one making this because every moment, every little scene, whether it's a tense moment, a funny moment, TOS had that score, and sometimes it's a little overbearing, maybe, but in this episode it really stuck out because there's almost no score in TNG now. <laughs> it really does well guiding you along to what you're supposed to be feeling. The score is, like, so important to an episode. The structure, the backbone, and, like, it helps guide the audience along. I'm just picturing, like, any possible movie without a score, and it would just fall so goddamn flat. Like, one that comes to mind, like, uh, the ending of, of uh, Endgame when all the people come through the portals. Like, imagine if it was dead Because in reality, it's dead silent. <laughs> yeah, it's just the noise of the portals. Just people, yeah, just people walking in slowly. It's like... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be pretty Yeah, hilarious. but this, I love when they first transfer over and the whole... Mm -hmm, the, you know, they're like, they realize that uh, everything's wrong. And I love the setting of the tone for the hook by Mirror Spock uh, zapping Lieutenant Kyle. No, Mr. Spock! I tried, I really tried. This was directed by Mark Daniels, classic, classic Star Trek director. And so, you know, it's funny. In TOS, there were some one-offs, but I feel like there's been a lot more one-off directors in, in TNG so far. Because in you know, TOS, we still remember the list of, like, you know, Mark Daniels, Ralph Sinensky, Joseph Pevney, you know, like the ones that you would see all the time. So that's, that was definitely reminiscent of, like, a oh, Mark Daniels episode. Yeah, always great seeing those names up there. Uh, written by Jerome Bixby. I, I'm not 
uh, maybe there's something else he's written in Star Trek, but it's not coming to mind. Definitely sounds familiar, like I've seen it before, yeah, right but now. I don't know. I, I think I remember making this, uh, this notice when we first watched the episode years ago, but when they're like going through the hallways and everyone's doing the, you know, the basically Nazi salute, Kirk's the first one to adjust. The other three are like, oh, what's going on? Kirk's like, not here, not here. Calm down. And, you know, does a salute. He's walking by. I'm glad he's the one to first pick up on it because he's the captain. Yeah, and Kirk is Superman, of course. And this whole episode, he slips right in so great that the only one that really ever notices him is Mirror Spock. But everyone else, he does such a great job. Just like, oh, I have to be an evil version of myself? Okay, I'll do it. Uh, one of my favorite moments is when uh, the fight happens in the hallway, when Chekhov tries to kill him to take over. Mm -hmm. And first of all, great shot. turbo lift opens punched in the face <laughs> yeah excellent shot and then you know action little uh tussle there in the hallway and then after it's done the one guy that tries to like coalesce and he's like you're in line you might even make captain yes sir <laughs> not on my ship kind of takes me back to Riker and the klingons and i feel uh, this federation is more of like a, a klingon type hierarchy like they're, they're doing things the same way the klingons would almost like trying to take out your superior and it makes me think, what are the Klingons doing in this universe? Oh, are they the good guys? Oh, yeah. God, could you imagine? A mirror, mirror, uh, mirror, mirror type episode where it features the Klingons? That would be pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, one thing I noticed, uh, I don't, can't remember if I noticed it the first time I watched, but they go to the computer and Kirk's like, okay, we got to find out who we are here. Captain James T. Kirk succeeded to command ISS Enterprise through assassination of Captain Christopher Pike. I'm like, oh shit! Oh, that is cool. I didn't, even, I didn't even catch that this yeah. time. I'm like, oh god, he killed Pike. The lower crew are trying to constantly kill the captain and take over, and that sets it up for later when Sulu comes in and tries to take over. But it will leave me in command. <laughs> And I love that it's set up so perfectly. Like, it's not just random stuff happening. It's, in such a short time, it sets up the rules of this mirror universe and then follows those rules. Yeah. So I really yeah. was impressed by that. What about Sulu with his scar, man? Yeah, and he was Badass. awesome. And uh, George Takei, just like his acting. They all did great as like evil versions of themselves, but he was one of my favorites and he tries to, you know, harass Ahura and then he tries to kill Kirk, like just the most menacing person you can think of. I could change your mind. You are away from your post, mister. Absolutely. Uh, I loved uh, seeing the evil versions of them, but I really wish we saw the four that got transported through the evil versions of themselves more. Because that was the funniest part of the episode. Like, I wonder what our counterparts are doing. They're just immediately caught in the brick, you know? <laughs> what do you suppose our counterparts are doing back in our universe? On our Enterprise. <laughs> right away. It's like, nope, something. Like, our spy figures it out right away. Nope. Something's wrong. Traitorous pig, I'll hang you up by your Vulcan ears. Are you all executed? I think not. What do you want, Spock? Power? Money? <laughs> <laughs> and Spock's like, fascinating. <laughs> oh, I love it. And I, I mentioned this in our first reaction, too. I just love how even in a mirror universe where it's horrible, Kirk's like, Spock's my guy. He can do it. It's like, well, it takes one man to you know, start a change, start a revolution. One man cannot summon the future. But one man can change the present. Be the captain of this enterprise, Mr. Spock. So curious about the, what the Vulcans are like in this universe. I would love to know how, like, it's mirrored. How much is mirrored and how much is the same? Yeah. Like, do the Vulcans still go by logic? Because this Spock still seems uh, logical. He's just acting, he just has to act within uh, the world that he lives in. How long before the Hulk and prediction of galactic revolt is realized? Approximately 240 years. The inevitable outcome? The Empire shall be overthrown, of course. In addition to the score, the lighting as well. We kind of always talk about it in TOS, but it's because it has to be talked about. Yeah. It is such a great element to set the mood. The scene that jumps to mind is when he first meets Marlena. I fell asleep. It completely changes the tone. Like, you immediately know that they're going for, oh, this is the love interest. You know, just by the way the score and the lighting combination. Barbara Luna also just does a great job in that role. Probably one of the best. Uh, Kirk, uh, what, what would you call it? I don't want to call it a Kirk woman. Like, what do you... <laughs> love, love, in, love interest. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd go for that. Yeah, her whole motivation is, uh, like, she wants to be, like, a captain's woman, right? Or wants to... Does she want to be more than a captain's woman? Or, because... Kirk, you know, acting as evil Kirk says, you know, you'll be my woman as long as, you know, I, 
Yeah, I, I think, want you to be, right? I think, like, she, in because of the world that she's in, she thinks being a captain's woman is, like, the highest she can go. Yeah. And Kirk tries telling her, like, no, you can be more than that. Yes, you can be, yeah. Yeah. I simply meant that you could be anything you want to be. It's like, who are you? It's like, Kirk's trying to be good, trying to be himself, but he has to remember, like, oh, yeah, I'm not me here. I got to tap the brakes a little bit. Probably one of the more ridiculous elements of the episode is when Marlena reveals to him the magic button that can kill anybody by making him disappear, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's yeah. it. Yeah, it's like Kirk has this, you know, genocide machine. It's like, oh, how did how do you take out all these worlds? And he just, how did they get this? How did they form it? How does it work? How does it work? How does no one else know about it? Yeah, that's the typical Star Trek TOS thing, that if they did try to do something like that in TNG, I think we'd be a lot more like, what the hell? But like in TOS, it's like, oh, that's part of this. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. And then Spock mind melts with McCoy. Oh, McCoy saves Spock. He's like, even it's evil Spock. He still wants to save him after they have that great fight scene. And that, yeah. like, <laughs> it was so great to see those obvious stunt doubles again from that like high up angle and the score and people are flying across the room taking hit tosses and back body drops. I'm like, oh, this is great. I miss this. Yeah, there's a couple times in the show where because of whatever circumstance they're in, the crew fight each other for a little bit. This has to be the best and most memorable. The Basically the entire crew all fighting Spock and Spock just taking them all down until Kirk comes in with the skull. And breaks it over his head. Was it a skull? I thought it was a vase. Oh, it looked like a skull. It might have yeah. been a skull. Cause, okay. Yeah, because Bones is like, he's going to die. He's going to get medical attention. I'm like, just a vase across the head? <laughs> yes, that's, yes, that would probably knock you out, but I don't think it would kill him, especially Spock, but... Well, classic TV and movie trope, anytime you break something over the back of someone's head, immediately knocked out and might be dead. <laughs> Uhura had that, that great scene where Uhura has to distract him, and uh, she's being all flirty and everything, and then she you know, pulls the knives on him. And then, of course, at the end, giving Marlena the... <laughs> I also just got to say, Kirk has to have the most diverse hookup list of anybody. I mean, he's hooked up with aliens, with humans, and also girls from the Mirror Universe. Can anyone else say that? <laughs> the man can pull, let me tell you. <laughs> I might be able to dress up like him and pretend I'm him, but I can't pull like him, let me tell you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, first time watching this show through, I knew right away, like, oh, this is one of the best episodes, and I'm, you know, it was up there on our lists and everything. Um, going back and re-watching it, I definitely think well, I want your opinion on this. I want to say this is an episode I would show someone that hasn't seen the show and thinks like, oh, this is probably a goofy 60s show. Like, oh, well, we'll watch this one. I don't know if they would have the full appreciation because they don't know the regular characters. But I feel like the premise is simple enough that you can follow along. Yeah, the premise is simple enough. Our actors in the Mirror Universe, you want to know what the regular yeah. versions of themselves are like? Because this episode takes no time to, like, get right into it. Um... I would say the enemy within would be the best. That one always comes to mind. We're like, you got to show them this. Okay, that's fair. Similar premise to this one in terms of like not a mirror, but like a uh, different version of yourself. Because, mm -hmm. but this one, mirror, mirror, and the enemy within are the two I would think of. That like, yeah, I got to show someone this classic tube shot with Scotty uh, working in the ship. That was in this. Yeah, that two-layer engineer bridge too. Uh, that uh, was one of the best sets. Love that. Miss seeing that. Uh, Sulu had that Spider-Man 3 haircut going on, and I thought that was funny. Oh, the ending, I remember calling the ending. I'm like, oh, Marlene is going to be there. And when she came up, I'm like, love it. I was just assigned last week. All right, Lieutenant, carry on. It really is an excellent ending all around. And, you know, you never see her again, but it's okay. I mean, you get it. <laughs> She's there. You know, they, they eventually got down to it. Um... <laughs> I guess I just wished I wished I saw, like, a uh, a mirror universe of this episode where I'd like to see an evil Bones, an evil, more of evil Kirk. I mean, we've seen evil Kirk on the enemy within. Evil Ahura, and who is the uh, evil Scotty. That would be fun to see. Because all we saw them was in the brig going, ah! Yeah. Yeah, that'd be interesting and have Spock be the protagonist who has to act as mirror Spock. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, that could be fun. Yeah, and uh, I'm always curious, like, what did uh, Mirror Spock do? Like, because Kirk told him, like, hey, I have this device. You can, you know, kill whoever you want to, you know, start this change. And I'm picturing it's like in the multi in the multiverse is uh, Spock the same, and everyone just he's just a victim of whatever world he lives in. He's always like a good, uh, logical person, but he just lives in this world of the Empire. It's like oh well, this is my job. Yeah, it's interesting, and it's also interesting that it's episodes called Mirror Mirror, and they say it's a mirror universe. But does that mean it's like directly tied to our universe? Because if that Spock does start making these changes, would that affect our universe at all, or is it independent? And they just, call, you know what I mean? Like, is it just an alternate dimension? I think it's just all because both universes at the same time were in the transporter during this magnetic storm that you know punished these Hawken people. So I think it's just I don't know multi layers, and these two layers just happen to be right on top of each other at the same time. Uh, did you notice that usually in the show, this, uh, the ship, when you, like when they come back from a commercial or something, or the show like a break in time, they show the Enterprise going from the you know, left to right on, around the planet. It was going the opposite way this time. I'm like, ah, like Pretty that, good. like little, that. Little good. touches. Little touches. If I had the time and I didn't hate Paramount Plus, I'd say we just start the channel all over again. <laughs> start, <laughs> start from the beginning. Just do it again like this so we can, you know, chillax watch the episodes. That'd be fun. But doing this is just as good, I think. And I'm sure we will definitely get there one day to that point, but uh, I'm sure we'll appreciate it even more with a little bit more time separated. Just like uh, Cody and Roman, man, you gotta just, we have time to finish the story, you know, we'll wait another year, we'll lose uh, the, at the first Mania, we'll get it at the second one. Yeah, for sure. Well, we both love it, and we love the Mirror Mirror and the Mirror Universe, but I think it's time for us to get back to our own universe. How about you? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, how do we get back? Oh! 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 What? Oh God! I'm over here again. Oh! Oh! How'd you knew that was gonna happen? Oh, we were close to the end of the runtime. Oh. Yeah. Wait. No. I still don't have Fireball. Must have left it at home.